Good evening, everybody. I'm going to just talk a little bit tonight about things that have been on my mind, things that I've been noticing. One of the big things is obviously what is happening to the world, everybody's fears based around the coronavirus. I'm not going to go too much detail into that at this time because everybody already knows. But if you find you're in a situation where you have no hope, a situation that is dark, unexpected, it will pass. And you need to allow your soul to shine bright, to look into yourself and see your heart glow brighter and brighter and brighter, to fill an orb around yourself, around your families, around your house, around the earth, Nahuni. And it will help protect you, to heal you, and the ones around you. Tohuaniana. It's easy to lose yourself to depression and fear, to negativity. But by shining light into the dark places, you bring balance to it. You do not stay in that space. We've been challenged and human race has been challenged more than we had in a very long time more so than any time in my lifetime. And there's things to come. Nahuasini will be challenged much greater than we already have. That's when you need to allow your, your light to shine the brightest. And every individual has, has this darkness within themselves that they need to face every day. That's the thing about being a human being. We're not just simply light, we're also dark. But dark is not evil. But if we allow it to be, then it will become what we consider evil. Twisted, manipulative. But that's kind of our own faults. We can choose to be whatever you want to be, no matter if it kills us or not. But there's so many people that are afraid to die that to give up a part of themselves, thinking they're saving themselves, but they're not. There is no easy way We're human beings. Sometimes time, life is hard. I would like to hope that the human race will wake up someday and realize that all these dark thoughts, all these dark messages, all these things that are going on within everybody's minds can be stopped, can be brought to balance, and the world itself will be able to rejoice. There's so many people that think a world of peace would be boring. That's just their ego speaking. It is not the truth because we know if you are aware of what it, the potential of life is, you would never say that statement. Because drugs and alcohol are one of the ways to control people, to make you inherently addicted to things to make you want it to make you need it there's a reason why it doesn't disappear you you're trying to tell me that the that the we don't have the power to stop that you'd be surprised what people have the power to do if they work together there's so much mistrust there's so much 
misinformation. There's so much hate. There's so much me energy. There's so much fear in the world. More, it's just at an unbelievable level. There's so much more. Like at one time it was funny because everybody was like, everybody can say what they wanted to say. It was not a big deal. Now even that is being attacked at unprecedented levels. And people are misunderstanding opinions as prejudice. People are misunderstanding people's thoughts as prejudice. And it could go on in many different aspects. It's not simply that one thing. There is positive aspects of things, but there's also a lot of negatives. You've got a, a few people that can literally hijack the world's thoughts, control the world's thoughts. Now, do you allow anybody to control what you think? You'll probably first answer me, no, I don't allow anybody to control what I think. Well, you probably are and be totally manipulated because the media is manipulated. Facebook is manipulated. Tweet, Twitter is manipulated. Instagram is manipulated. YouTube is manipulated. Everybody and everything and everywhere. It's so hard to know what the truth is because people lie. People do not tell the truth. And that's sad because if people had, had the understanding of what, what lies actually do to you, then they wouldn't be lying so easily. The intentions of what we do has consequences to our souls. And you just can't simply say when you die that all of a sudden, yeah, I'm going to be for all my sins are going to be forgiven. If you have the power to do that yourself, then all your sins will be forgiven. But there's very few people on this earth can actually die and say that they don't have any regrets. Because that's very difficult for a human being to do. So we, what we do is we create all these fragments throughout our lifetimes that we never ever are able to get back. And that one lifetime. So we have to come back and work and da 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 in order to get all these things back. But one of the things that people forget is that all these consequences and fragments can be easily brought back if you know how. And it's understanding and forgiving those aspects of yourself. There's one thing that you, you have an animal that dies and you help their soul move, move on. It's a great thing to do. But you can do the same thing about souls that have died many lifetimes ago or recently. But there's very few people that actually will go out of their way to do that. Very few people go out of their way to help somebody else. But they don't understand that we're all one and we're all connected. So helping somebody else is actually helping yourself. Helping the human race is helping ourselves. There's a huge disconnect in understanding and what is taught. But again, these are just my opinions, are they not? It's like somebody else has their opinions. But you have to look at everybody's opinions and come up with your own. What makes more sense? And that's kind of what I've been going through a lot of my own life is getting knowledge from the spirit realm, getting knowledge from people and deciding what to do with that knowledge and how it makes me feel and how I interact that within my own self and my own beliefs. There's one journey I did recently that was quite interesting. It was talking about what happens to your soul. And it brought me down a journey of understanding about decision making throughout your life. And that every decision that you make, there's, all, there's, there's other parts of your soul that will make the opposite decision. Think about that for a second. 
So if you choose to go down the dark path yourself, are you making the wrong decision? Because I keep hearing this over and over and over again, that there is no wrong decisions. You can't make the wrong decision. You're on the right path. Even though it feels like I could have done this differently, I could have done this better, there's always the same answer that you, you're exactly where you need to be and everything you said was correct and every decision that you made was correct. Now, you, now they're telling me that throughout your whole life, every decision you didn't make is now being lived out by a different part of your soul. So when you die and you pass over into, into the other dimensional space, you get all this knowledge back of every lifetime of that you that lived in this reality. So me, I did, I lived to my full potential. Me, right now, every decision I make affects my future. But every future that is beyond that I didn't make is already being lived. So it makes you realize that there is no wrong decision. And that's where you come down. There is no evil. And there's, and there is no, like when you look at people that are doing bad things as a human race and a human collective, we have the ability to say no to that. that. No, we don't want to be in a society like that. So we choose a different reality, but there could be lifetimes and, and, and like you could say, basically, mirror images of the earth that people are living exactly the same thing that we're living to and you've seen many shows and stuff that were based on that concept that are living a completely different version of reality and that there could be a world that is so dark because so many people are are, are deciding to go on a dark path then we have this earth that was kind of stuck in between and then we have other versions that are probably absolutely amazing so, but every part of her soul is choosing to live in that this all this realities that are happening simultaneously. Is that true? It does answer a lot of freaking questions. It answers a lot of things and a lot of what was being said to me many times in many different ways. So there is no right and wrong. Every decision that you make right now, even if you make you consider the right decision, there's a part of yourself that's making the opposite or the wrong decision. To live that aspect of life, to see how that would affect me in another life, in another re alternate reality. It is one of those situations that, are you going to make it to the end? Like, what is the oldest I can actually live and am I going to be the one that makes it to the oldest? It's like a game in a way. And maybe that's all this is. It's just one game. Maybe we come here to learn, obviously to learn about life. We learn a lot about life when we're here. And maybe when we're in the spirit realm, it's like time is so weird and so different that maybe we come here to reset things, to, re to have a better appreciation of the spirit world, to bring new life into it, to bring new life into yourself. And so we come here and we live our life and every aspect that could possibly happen, your soul lives it. And then all that knowledge is brought back to yourself. So we become much more diverse much more understanding and every person has limitations and every person has a specific DNA so there is limitations you can't become the fastest runner in the world if you're born with no legs unless of course robotics are involved you understand though if you're born blind and you can you can you're never going to know what sight is but that part of your soul is going to live every aspect of what is possible. It's an interesting thing. It's an interesting concept. And I'm leaving it in your hands to, to do with it what you may. But I would like to ask everyone that watches my videos to comment on the video and come up with some ideas that you would like me to journey to. 
to heal, for instance. Not individuals, not for specific people. Unless it's a, a person in history. I prefer... I am my one of my specialties is soul retrieval. That's why I do these journeys into these places, into these energies that have a lot of impact for the human race. One of the most difficult places I went to was a journey into Lucifer and a journey in the Auschwitz were the two most difficult journeys I've ever done. You will never have any understanding what how difficult that was. The echoes were so loud. Were so loud that you could get lost in them. And you could just cry for days and nobody would ever know why. And you could and, and you could fall deeper into that energy. Get lost into it so badly that you might never recover from it it happens to people that's why this type of journey work is not for everyone you don't step into Auschwitz unless you know what you're walking into you don't go into heal Lucifer unless you know what you're going getting yourself into but there's two sides to every soul there's light and the dark and anybody that's come down to the physical reality has both light and dark. That's what makes us unique, makes us strong, makes us who we are. So if you wish to do a journey with me, you can visit my website at amonrossawakening.com and I have a couple of Northern Light pages, even though they're a little slow right now. Still quite beautiful. You just never know. I always have people, there's always a lot of people ask me about Northern Lights. I own a retreat here in the Yukon. Me and my friend, longtime friend since grade two, we open it up together. And it's specifically in a, a, an 88 acres in an open field surrounded by mountains. It's absolutely a, a dream come true for me. But it, it since it's just opened up, we just opened it up just before. COVID hit. So it was, it, it's been quite difficult. But at the same time, things are what they're meant to be. And there is very much a cycle of Northern Lights. But there's so many people ask me, well, how often do you see them? You can see them, da 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 Ask me a lot of questions about them. And over the years I've been shooting them, I know a lot about Northern Lights. I know that waiting is the number one thing. And it could be a slow season, you can get amazing Northern Lights. But they're not very common. When it's on the high peak, like the, the high cycle, which you probably heard is 11-year cycle, and you're at the high point of that, they're a lot, the good ones are a lot more common. But the really, really good ones that will absolutely blow your mind, which most of the ones on my website are the best of the best, are not common. You can count extremely good storms, even in peak season, maybe 10 a year. But then you can have other ones that will still blow your mind that are like way more common, way more frequent. So it's you just never know, because it could be right now, we could be... 0% chance and I've seen them blow up all over the sky so you just never know you can come you can go look at them on my website at uh, josephbradleysauroras.com and hidden aurora spirits which I tried to do some not tried I did some interesting mirror images that produce some really interesting effects so check it out It's and all those are massive like they're 72 inches most of them um yeah they're quite large and some of the pans even go to like 100 and 200 inches long so this give you some ideas how big they are the website doesn't give you that idea 
Anyway, thank you, everyone, and have a great day, and thank you again for everything. And remember, when things seem to be at the darkest, always make sure you go in and shine a light within your own heart. Visualize that light getting brighter and brighter and brighter and filling yourself, you, like around you in a circle and expand it outwards into your, into your room, into your house, into the city, into the world, and beyond if you wish. I cannot stress enough how important that is. And say that to as many people as you can. Because you never know when you're going to need it. Take care. Have a good day.